Now, in addition to chunking, we also have clustering. Clustering is the idea that we are now connecting stimuli not based on their proximity or their order, but based on semantically how we think about them in our brain. We're looking at the categories and we're categorizing lots of stimuli to make it more systemic. And this is the idea if you're going to go grocery shopping, are you going to try and remember everything on your list in the order you randomly wrote things down? Because that would be chunking. Or are you going to try and remember things based on some sort of meaningful category? Even if milk is at the top of the list and yogurt is at the bottom of the list, maybe you're going to remember those together because those fit in the category of dairy products. And maybe produce will fit in and maybe condiments or pasta goods will fit in. You're going to find these different categories. This is the idea that if you are going to try and recall a list of the animals at the zoo, are you going to try and recall them in the order you saw them? It's very possible. Or maybe you'll try and recall them in terms of what continent they're from. And so there's lots of different ways that we can cluster in our mind and the way we categorize things in our mind. We tend to put things into little boxes and how we make these boxes are personal. How you choose what goes into a category is based on your previous experiences and how you recognize it. It's not necessarily due to hard, fast scientific taxonomy rules. And so if we think about, uh, for instance, when we think about the months of the year, we may remember the months of the year in a very specific way. For instance, if you were to try and recall the months of the year in chronological order, you probably could quite well. But imagine now if someone were to ask you to recall the months of the year as quickly as you can in alphabetical order. You might know that you start with April and then August, but then things might get a little bit trickier. And so what we find here is clustering is this very specific way that we categorize things. And the way we categorize things helps us to recall it, but can also inhibit our memory and make our more memory more rigid by this sort of way that we box in and remember things in a very specific way. We remember the months of the year chronologically, but not alphabetically. That's how we've clustered it. We can also find that sometimes in clustering, we misname things. I think about colors a lot. I definitely know the difference between pink and orange, but I also think of pink and orange as both being one color off of red. And so because of that, I have this tendency to say pink when I mean orange and say orange when I mean pink. And this has to do with how I've clustered them in my brain. The synapses to them are very similar, so sometimes I may say the wrong color. You know, it may also call someone by a different name. If you're a parent with multiple children and you've called your child one of their siblings' names, or this is an experience you grew up with and your parents did it to you, this is due to clustering in the brain. All the kids and all the kids' names are in one category, so when they go to retrieve it, the synaptic pathway they go to just brings them that category, but they choose the wrong item from the category. So clustering can be really helpful. It can help us to reduce a really immense list down to just a few categories of items. If you're thinking about how to remember things from an intro psych a section, then you might try and cluster into these different categories. But it can also lead to lots of memory biases in terms of when you go shopping, you might say, oh, I know there's something else I need. And when I was thinking about it, it reminded me of carrots and broccoli carrots and broccoli, carrots and broccoli, what do I usually put with carrots and broccoli? And so then you might be walking around the produce aisle, but maybe it wasn't something in produce that you needed. Maybe it was something like ranch dip and you're not going to find that in the section you're in. And so then you find yourself walking around constantly. We also might find that sometimes uh, this clustering uh, can make us think about things in a very stereotypic way. It's the idea that when you're trying to recall information, you're only really recalling the category and you're seeing the category as homogenous rather than diverse. So in areas like social psychology, this can play a major role in how we consider stereotypes. If you're thinking about your three friends in university who all are majoring in economics, you might think about them in the same way and then sort of use them to stereotype other people who are majoring in economics. And so this is how stereotypes can form. Our brain is hardwired to make stereotypes and it's something we have to be vigilant against when they can be prejudiced and discriminatory. So with clustering, it's the idea that we are starting to put things into schemas or schemes. And so a couple words in psychology that are often used interchangeably are schemas, schemes, and schematas. And these really mean ideas. So a schema or a scheme is an idea or a category. And so this happens when we start to organize our clusters. This happens, you may have a cluster for fruits and vegetables, 
and then within that cluster of fruits and vegetables that goes in the higher cluster known as food and so now you have a schema this is something that's going to have a hierarchy it's going to have layers so clusters don't always have layers but schemas are clusters with layers this makes sense let's let's do another example let's say you have a schema for sports and within that schema for sports you have lower schemas for winter sports and summer sports and for winter sports you have schemas for things that take place on snow versus things that take place on ice those could be how you have the different layers or if you have a schema for vehicles you might have water vehicles land vehicles and air vehicles and under land vehicles you might have things that are on rails versus things that have wheels and then with things that have wheels you might go down to four wheels or two wheels or three wheels and so those are the different clusters or categories you would have within that schema now this is all personal it's all based on your experiences and so we find that you can make this huge chain or schematic map or schematic network that shows how you connect these ideas in your brain so i've illustrated on this slide just one possible type of schematic network or schematic map and so we can see here if we're thinking about banana banana is a yellow fruit it might remind us of lemons it also might remind us of oranges and oranges also remind us of apples the sort of prototypical fruit from a lot of canadians perspectives a prototype is when i say fruit what fruit comes to mind most people are going to say things like apples bananas oranges they're less likely to say kiwi for instance and so banana might remind us of orange it might also remind us of pineapples and coconuts more tropical things which might have us thinking about palm trees pineapples might us thinking about brazil for instance of course when we say coconut that might remind us of like the cocoa from chocolate if we think about apples that might remind us of fall which makes us think about acorns and acorns come from oak trees and we're thinking about oaks now we're thinking about maple trees too maple trees make us think of maple syrup maple also reminds us of canada when we think about canada well now we're thinking about winter and hockey and we're thinking about winter well that reminds us of santa claus now when we're thinking about oak trees we're also thinking about trees in general which makes us think about christmas trees which also makes us think about snow and christmas and when we're thinking about trees in general we're also thinking about songbirds that live in trees so that's just an explanation of the illustration on this slide but that is just one very simplified version of what a schematic network could look like now i was talking about prototypes a prototype is the idea that if i say sport you are most likely thinking about a team sport with a ball or a puck football basketball baseball hockey soccer something in that nature if i say vegetable you might be thinking of a carrot or a potato you're less likely thinking of a turnip but who knows prototype is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about these categories and the prototype can really influence how our stereotypes form and so how we think about prototypes are very different now for instance when i say uh breeds of dog i tend to think of dogs that are more uh, mixed breed with long muzzles floppy ears and a long tail i don't tend to think about little tiny dogs with short ears short tails and mushed in muzzles but maybe you like a lot of bulldogs or pugs and maybe so when i say dogs you think of a pug maybe you think of something like a German Shepherd. So we all have different types of prototypes when we think about these different types of animals. Another way that we can cluster is through mnemonic devices. So a mnemonic device is when we're clustering things and we're reducing cognitive load, but not remembering everything, but remembering this one little abbreviation or phrase that helps us to remember things in order. So it's the idea if you want to remember the colors of the rainbow you might be familiar with Roy G Biv almost looks like a name and now we're just remembering three little sounds but those three little sounds make up seven different letters and seven letters are easy to remember but they help us to remember red orange yellow green blue indigo violet from the rainbow now some people put uh, D before the next one you can tell how old I was or I went to high school when I say King Philip came over from Greece Saturday and that helps me to remember kingdom phylum class order family genus and species there's also bed mass which i remember from grade seven algebra as brackets exponents division multiplication addition sub subtraction and foil which came later on in my math which is when we're learning how to multiply things in brackets and remember to multiply the first then the outside insides and last 
and that is just some examples of mnemonic devices. You may have lots of personal mnemonic devices that you have developed over the years. Mnemonic devices are great. If you're the type of person who just makes them by default when you're learning, this is an excellent study habit and highly recommend it. Reduces your cognitive load, increases the complexity of what you're remembering, and it can also help to visualize it. I always visualize this king leaving Greece on Saturday, and it always helps me to remember. I would never recall the, the biological taxonomy without that. Now that being said, can you recall the nine faces that were shown earlier? Out of the nine faces currently on screen, which faces have you seen already? Some of these might be very simil similar and might trick you up a little bit. Can you point out which faces are new and which faces are repetitive? Might be harder than you think.